Here this uh, question 118, it is based on conservation of angular momentum. Here it says that a mass m moves in a circle on a smooth horizontal plane with a velocity v0 at radius r0 as it has been shown here. The mass is attached to a string which passes through a smooth hole in the plane as shown. So maybe it is on a table and hole is there through which the string is passing and going down. You are pulling this string downwards. The tension in the string is increased gradually. You see here mvr is constant I am saying. Now if you are increasing the tension then uh, what is happening that it is coming down to radius r0 by 2. So radius is halved. So you see the velocity will be doubled, isn't it? Because mvr has to remain constant. Now velocity is doubled. Now they demand what is the kinetic energy? What is the kinetic energy? So half m into 2 v0 square. So that is 2 mv0 square and that is the fourth option that will be the most appropriate option for question number 118. Now let us switch over to question number 119. This is a question from wave optics that to diffraction at, and you can say this is a state formula which has been asked. This is based on uh, diffraction and the central bright. You can say the expression of central bright has been demanded. It is saying that for a parallel beam of monochromatic light of wavelength lambda, diffraction is produced by a single slit whose width is a, this is aperture given to you, is of the order of the wavelength of the light. If d is the distance of the screen from the slit the width of the central maxima will be. So this is the standard expression 2 lambda capital D upon small d. For small d they have given the aperture A. So you have to mark the option 2 for this question 119. This is a straightforward formula of width of the central bright. Now let us switch over to question number 120. Now this uh, question 120 it is based on Bernoulli's uh, principle. It says that a wind with a speed 40 meter per second blows parallel to the roof of a house. So naturally the pressure there will be less. So you can say upward force will be exerted on the rooftop. The area of the roof has been given assuming that the pressure inside the house is atmospheric pressure. Then the force exerted by the wind on the roof and the direction of the force. Direction of the force will be upward because on the upper side if the air is blowing then pressure will be less. Now see delta P by rho that is change in pressure upon density will be V square by 2 as per Bernoulli's equation and force will be simply delta P into area. This is what you have to calculate. You understand? So first of all you see downward forces these two options will be stricken off and if you calculate the value you will find that the force value is coming out to be 2.4 into 10 to the power 5 Newton. So net force will be this much and that too acting in upward direction. So the most appropriate answer will be option 4 for question number 120. Now let us switch over to question number 121. Now you see this uh, question 121 again this is based on direct formula. This is from kinetic theory. It says that ratio of the specific heat gamma in terms of the degrees of freedom. This is a standard relation gamma is equal to 1 plus 2 by n. Nothing to think about it. You can mark simply the option number 4 for question number 121. Now let us switch over to question number 122. Now this question 122 it is based on the chapter nuclei. This is related to nuclear radius and you know that nuclear radius is proportional to a raised to the power 1 by 3. a is mass number. It says that the radii, radius of the aluminium is RAL. So here it is RAL and proportional to what is the mass number given 27, 27 raised to the power 1 by 3 and they want it for tellurium. Let us suppose radius is R. So this is proportional to 125 raised to the power 1 by 3. You see that? So if you see that then the most appropriate answer will be uh, third one. You divide these two expressions and you will be getting R as 5 by 3 times RL. So that is the answer to question number 122. Now let us look at question number 123. Now this uh, question 123 again it is based on first law of thermodynamics and a cyclic process has been given to you. 
However, you can say from process, uh, you can say from point A to C, you are moving in two different ways. And in all such questions, always you have seen that the internal energy change in both these processes, that happens to be same. It says that in process AB, it is absorbing 400 joule and in process BC, it is absorbing 100 joule. So, if it has to go from A to C, the internal energy change in both the cases, that will be same, you have to understand. Whether you go by ABC or you go by AC, internal energy change will be same. Now, what is internal energy? It is basically heat minus work. So, total heat if you see in process AB and BC, that is equal to 400 plus 100, that is 500. 500 joule of heat has been added and uh, minus work, work will be calculated by the area. So, in this process AB, there is no work done because there is no volume change. But in process BC, this is constant pressure process. So, you have to calculate the entire area. Entire area is, uh, this is 6 here and this is difference is 2. 6 to the 12 multiplied by 10 because this is 10 to the power 4 and this is 10 to the power minus 3. So, this is 120. Now, this is equal to the internal energy change in first method AB and BC. Now, you are straight away going from A to C and they are wanting what is the heat added. So, let us suppose the heat added is Q minus. Now, what is the work done? So, you have to calculate the work done by the area. So, here it is 6 and this is 2. So, what is the average of that? That is 4 multiplied by this 2. So, that is uh, 4 to the 8 multiplied by that 10 that is 80. So, in total this Q comes out to be 460 joule and that will be the answer to this question. So, I am marking option 4 for this uh, question 123. Now, let us switch over to question number 124.